It's December 6, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. That makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Industry Related Length, episode number 580. And we have a guest guest on. It's Edward Angelini Cook. Yay! Welcome back. We'd love to have you. Hi, honey. It's Hi. time to talk about sex. Uh -oh. oh, I have no experience with that whatsoever. Let's talk about sex. Anyways. <laughs> no experience at all? None? None. None. Zero. None. So virtual Zero. over there. Okay. Uh huh. Even you though, oh, you did actually. Snow. Sweet, innocent, virtuous child. Mm -hmm. Sure. No. 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 Uh -huh. Just no. no. Oh, somebody's not buying it. No. <laughs> <laughs> not pick it up what we're putting down. I mean, when he's when he's called our our like he's the official resident sex therapist. I mean, sure. I mean, I mean, technically, I guess you could be the resident sex therapist. You could be a sex therapist and and not know any. I mean, not know, but not an asexual sex therapist. Yeah, it it could be a thing. I'm not going to judge. I'm not saying anything at all. It could be a thing. You can learn a lot of things just by, you know, reading and knowledge and education. Having said that, I know that's not true <laughs> with you. <laughs> right, wow. Absolutely. Yeah, there are definitely a lot of asexual sex therapists out there. I am not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it Boom. usually comes Mic in handy. Drop. Yeah, yeah. There we go. All right. So let's so, talk about sex. All right. So you know about tops. You know about bottoms. You know about verse. But what about sides? What about them? I, I will admit, um, and this is going to be my personal like mental like mm -hmm. connection. When I when we first saw this topic, I did not think of this in this way at all. I considered sides like side chick, like the 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 person that a couple has on on the side, like they're they have a strong like similar to like a polycule kind of thing, but it's like they're third there's you know it's not really a part of the relationship it's side there's it's a side piece we've heard it before it's it's you know those kind of things that's what i was thinking of when we first this was first mentioned better be reminded so, about this too so when i read i i'm so glad i went to the doc earlier today <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 took me and looked at what was going on i was like oh that's right I'm not going to be an idiot when we get back on the chat. <laughs> uh, I remember hearing the term in this this way uh, a while ago, but when 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 Gary put it up saying we're we're going to do a let's talk about sex sides, I was, I got confused because it just didn't. And then when he said it, I'm like, oh oh yeah, yeah I know that one. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Maybe it was talking to you at. At one point in time, or I don't know where where I remember first flirting it, but once I it could have been me, it, yeah. I'm I'm gonna make a presumption for you, Jeff, that it came from Ed, uh, because of I don't know about you, David, but I had not heard of it until Drew, uh, oh like yeah, friend of the pod, as some people say, um, he had sent an article and was like, not sure if you guys have discussed this, um. And I was like, wah, 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 wah. That's right. I didn't read that article. I know who and, sent that. I and I now. was like, what, 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 is, what is this business? Um, so on Thanksgiving Day, I listened to a podcast about this very subject by people who identify as sides. And I believe one of them in the podcast is the person that Ed knows of has a linkage with that created the terminology. And I was just like, uh, how could we not have somebody on to talk about this or at least discuss it amongst each other? So I reached out to Ed and was like, hey girl, you know anything about this? And then 
<laughs> like the chat was like, you know, glitter and sparkles and unicorns and pegasus. Like, you know, it was uber gay. And like, I think he tinkled himself. I, I you know. Well, it's, it's funny because, um, yeah, I mean, so this is a term that has, uh, uh, like, I've been aware of for a little while now. And, um, like, when Gary messaged me, um, I had just kind of talked to um, uh, Joe Court, who is the kind of person who um, created the terminology of side. Um, and we're in a, a group, which I'll talk about more, called Side Guys. Um, it is a Facebook group for people who identify as sides. And I had, uh, you know, like we had talked and I was like, hey, you know, I'd really love to kind of pick your brain. And he's also a certified sex therapist. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm on the, um, the, the pathway to become a certified sex therapist. So he could potentially be one of my supervisors. Um, oh. But uh, after Gary uh, messaged me, I, I texted him and I said, hey, <laughs> so I'm going to be doing this thing. Um, and I just wanted to let you know. And he was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. You know, you have to pass this on. And um, and then, you know, one of the other things I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later is my dissertation, which kind of is related to this in, in a little bit. But, you know, I was like, I think that um, uh, a an output of my dissertation is going to be research on sides, and I would love to collaborate with you on that. And he was like, oh, oh my God, absolutely. So I'm really excited to see where this goes, and I'm I'm glad to kind of talk about this and raise awareness and um, talk about what it is. Awesome. Yay! So, um, yeah. very uh, serendipitous, I guess, is the way to. It is very serendipitous. I feel like that's the way that the universe works. So let's uh, stop the mystery for our audience who is like, "What the hell, y'all talking about?" Like, so um, as a clarification, this is not about like your holiday meal and what your favorite <laughs> like non like main dish thing is. Um, Side dish. Yeah, like, I, I think that some people might be like, you know, oh, like, people want to fuck a potato? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, we've talked about a great many things in the years on this show, so anything's game at this point. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, Ed, if you would help us with the definition so we can uh, kind of dive into this. Yeah, so uh, so thanks, Gary. So a side is uh, is a term that was coined by Joe Court, like I said, in 2013, um, as somebody who personally does not engage in anal intercourse, and he was frustrated by the the continuing conversations that he would have with people when they would ask him, um, you know, are you a top or a bottom? And he was like, I'm kind of neither. Uh, and he was having a conversation with somebody, and he said, can I just, like, be a, on the side? <laughs> uh, and... <laughs> So in that kind of, uh, you know, a lot of things come out of just, uh, you know, random kind of coincidence. So he was like, hey, I wonder if that can be a thing. Um, so he wrote a, an article for the Huffington Post in 2013 about side, about guys who don't engage in anal penetration um, as a side. And um, and it is kind of it's it's been a mainstay. Right. Like so uh, like we'll kind of talk about uh, he has had other um, articles published. He's created this Facebook group. There has been um, other people who have uh, talked about being a side um, and what it means for them. Uh, so yeah, so it is um, a gay man who does not engage in anal intercourse or penetration um, because it is not part of their erotic orientation um, and uh, erotic orientation is different from sexual orientation because sexual orientation is whom we're attracted to erotic orientation is what we're attracted to um, so it's all about our sexual fantasies um, our sexual like kind of like ideas and our also our sexual behaviors okay okay got questions before we dive into <laughs> that yeah um same. I'm gonna and, like, and a go bunch of this stuff that we're going to talk about is going to be on our website. So for y'all that like listen to this or watch it later, um, you're welcome to go to cubsoutloud.com. Ding. Um, and <laughs> check out the 
the blog portion with some of this. So, cause there's going to be a series of links, but we had, uh, d- Ed, you had put together for us like some great stuff, including self labels, um, that labels are usually to describe sexual behavior. Um, however, they predominantly focus on anal intercourse or penetration. So what we typically talk about in your role, I'm using air quotes, um, in like apps or profiles or those type of things is, you know, are you TBV or TVB or whatever, top, bottom, verse. Um, and I remember for the longest time, uh, verse had a negative connotation to it. Like when it started gaining like more popularity, it was like, you know, oh, girl, you're just a bottom. Like, stop trying to like, you know, pass off as, you know, wow, that you might top some time. Um, <laughs> yay, the the 90s into the aughts. What a great time I mean, to be gay. Mm-hmm. Fact. <laughs> See? Fact. <laughs> so, um, and now we have another term, which can probably be a little confusing for folks, but um i i i feel like everybody needs to take a moment and kind of process because mm-hmm. i think this is a revelation for some msm um mm-hmm. because i think that's really where the focus is at um individuals who are um you know can, if they label themselves you know as by um may you know not necessarily feel as much pressure in terms of like, you know, um, the labeling portion or trying to like, you know, explain or describe, but the podcast I listened to, like, I don't want to say it resonated, but it made a lot of sense about how it's just an expectation that you're going to say you're this and that like defines you and sets an expectation and the pressure that goes with that. True. Right. (laughs) <laughs> and, no, no, no. And, like I mean, if you and, and so you know, it, it and it can be emotionally, um, you know, stressful when you're trying to meet other people or make connections, and um, and there's a an interesting thing in this other podcast they talked about coming out as a side, um, so we might talk more about that. But so yeah, I was like, hmm, I had never heard of this before, and the term apparently has been you know about seven years now. So yay yeah. for learning new things. Um, it, sorry, my mind is sitting here getting a little blown a bit because the whole the whole thing about like expectations, like just yeah, like the minute you say you're a top, like you are expected to want to essentially only in some ways you know be into anal intercourse, like that is that is one of the like bigger expectations and that. So for many tops, you're you're not usually into getting. Sometimes, I mean, not all, but I mean, I'm de- not definitely not. But like in most cases, you're you want to. Your goal is to fuck an ass. Like that is the that's the only thing that you are interested in. That is mm-hmm. your pure focus, which I think is a very incorrect expectation. Yeah. Um, I think for a lot of, I think as we're kind of sitting here talking, I think a lot of us kind of feel that way. Um, And then kind of similar to the other side of it as a, for the bottom, um, there are other expectations often in a negative connotation. Like you're supposed to be the submissive. You're supposed to be the one who will take whatever you can get. You're the one that will, will, um, basically please the top until they fuck you because that is your goal is to essentially be fucked and i know for a fact that that's not true (laughs) i've met yeah it's just it's just very interesting that when you when when you when gary when you said the word expectation that's the like mind-blowing thing because that is something i think has been an issue um for many tops bottoms verse for 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 years is that they have this under this the word has a connotation and an expectation of of you will be this way which is never should never be the case but is often the case mm-hmm. and i think you know one of the other things with um like the self labels right of top bottom and verse is that you know oftentimes that is you know, it's um, it's defining sex as only anal penetration on anal penetration when there's, you know, sex is so much more than that. Um, and um, 
there are, uh, you know, like I know that when I'm talking to somebody, right. And they ask me, I'm like, I, I don't know you like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, um, you know, uh, and I like what we'll kind of get into sex for me is more than that. Um, and, um, and, you know, kind of talking about, um, the, like our sexual communication, like our sexual negotiation, when we're talking about a potential sexual encounter, right? Like sometimes, you know, the conversations I have is if it gets to that, right. It's kind mm -hmm. of the verbiage, um, you know, the, the, like, you know, when we use words like top, bottom, verse, like there's the expectation that that's going to happen. But like, I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, for a lot yeah. of, if it's a first encounter, that's not happening. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, but for somebody who identifies as like a side, right? Like, let's just take that off the table, right? Like that's, um, that's not, that's not going that's to be part of it. Happen. Yeah. And also, I want to make a distinction between anal intercourse and anal sex. Um, I think those are two different things. Mm -hmm. um, anal intercourse is like penetrative anal sex, um, where a penis is going into a, a rectum, um, where anal sex is other sexual behaviors that are um, surrounding the anus being like that can be rimming, um, that can be like some like, you know, some outer course, right, as opposed to like intercourse. Um, and there are some sides who are fine with um, some anal pleasure, just not uh, like in intercourse. Or does that make sense? It makes sense to me. I, it, it's it's sounding like we we end, I mean, and and this is a thing which I think everybody needs to remember that we have these terms that think it's like this, that, other, but you have to realize that that just like gender identity, everything is on a spectrum, which means means people will have different points on the spectrum of where they they want to be. Like, uh, like when we talk about like the, the top bottom verse thing, that's just points on the line. Either you're completely top, nothing ever touches your bottom, or you're completely bottom, uh, uh, that's all you want for the for your pleasure you're completely versatile where it's like you, you can flip at any any time then you've got this other spectrum of of yeah i'm a top but you know i like being rimmed which is another point in the spectrum there it's like mostly a top but a little bit with being being anal you know, pleasure it might even go into a different dimension and then you've got whether you even want to deal with that or not. And that's where the sides kind of come into how side are you? Does that make any sense? No, it it, and it's, it, it's, it's like most of the time I'm good with the oral, maybe with a little, you know, anal play, but maybe not in your course, but it, because of these different variables and everything, it's like this weird, like globe cube, thing where if you're finding your point you're like somewhere in this like globe space along different vertices of a spectrum or, or just oh. a series of different spectrums that you kind of like are a slider on it's more like maybe an abacus i don't know something like that yeah so like the introduction of sides makes it more of a um more of a different uh, structure, right? It's not so much of a dichotomy of just top or bottom or or verse, right? Now it's more now it's more complex. Now it's more nuanced um, than just that, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why I prefer of. What are you into? Yes, you know it's it's not it's not. You should be asking, hey, are you a top, bottom, or verse? It's what are you into? because you may be into one mm -hmm. thing or the other, or maybe it's like, yep. hey, I like oral stimulation. I like this sort of stimulation, but, you know, not so much into the anal thing. But you know Agreed. what? I, I will rim an ass like a, a good matter. I love being uh, being rimmed, uh, but uh, eh, I don't oh, want any penetration. <laughs> no, Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there. <laughs> the way I was describing his anal, like, I will go for it. I will do it. Like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> but um, I agree, I, Jeff. I like that that direction 
of what are you into as opposed to like, well, for lack of a better phrase, fuck me in the ass, you know, kind of thing. Like, like I don't, you know. Unless that's what you're a, into. A, <laughs> right. <laughs> Fair. I mean, yes. But like, I like the idea of having that conversation. I know, Ed, you've mentioned like, uh, like negotiations and things like that line, you know, um, one of the things I've often mentioned in my profiles, like I know I'm a top, I know I like anal sex, um, but I don't just like that. Mm -hmm. Like, and honestly, especially recently, most of the time, um, I'm totally fine if I don't fucking ass at all. Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm enjoying, I, I'm enjoying the pleasures of contact and touch and, and, um, sensual kind of play, if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. I'm enjoying those kind of things where, and you know, also kind of falling into the role playing and dom subs and stuff like that. But that's a whole other conversation. Um, consent is sexy, FYI. Um, but the, the general spectrum. idea being, yeah, the general idea being that that is um, because I, I don't. While I indicate that I'm a top, I don't always want to or need to top. Um, if that makes sense, like it, it, it doesn't have to be, it can be negotiated, but it doesn't always have to be on the plate in order for me to enjoy the, 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 the pleasure, the, the sex. So like, this, this kind of gets to one of my questions, Ed, which I think has sort of been answered, um, a little like, uh, background history. When I first came out, like I came out as bisexual because I find women attractive and interesting and beautiful. Um, and I learned like with time, like actually I don't really have interest in having sex with women. Like I think they're beautiful and I could look at them naked. They don't gross me out. I don't like have an issue, um, you know, or, or an aversion or whatever, um, mm -hmm. you know, and this was the early uh, 90s when that was like a hot thing. Um, you know, people had to be polarized, I guess, about it. So mm -hmm. eventually I got asked what my role was. And for the longest time, I never listed my role on an online profile because I didn't want to be bottom shamed. Like, mm -hmm. like, and it's not that I thought it was like a bad thing per se, but I just didn't want that to be the focus and mm -hmm. then eventually I kind of got over that for myself and I was just like, what's the big deal? You know, like, like just own it. If that's what you like, if that's what you're into. The bottom However, sets the power anyways, so. What? The bottom sets the power anyways. <laughs> True. So, <laughs> hashtag fact. Um, the, <laughs> you can knock, but you can't come in. Um, so, the, <laughs> just um, but, wow. it, but it made me really think, you know, uh, about how, like you were saying, Damon, like, you know, we, if you use this label, you're kind of like, you're prefacing a menu of an expectation of what is going to happen with another mm -hmm. person. And that's not necessarily what will happen. So Jeff's mm -hmm. question, I think, is a great, like, introduction into a conversation to have that communication possibly negotiation, you know, whatever the, the case may be. Um, and my question was going to be, Ed, like, you know, is side as definitive as top or bottom or verse? Because to me, those are kind of like straightforward. But as Jeff was talking, I'm like, well, like you could be a top that enjoys, you know, being rimmed. Doesn't make you a bottom. Doesn't make you verse. You know, like, so... I, I kind of get from the impression so far that yes, it's it is possible to decide you want to to use the label side, but it doesn't mean that you're like completely like you know that the anal area is a no go zone, correct? Yeah, I mean, like kind of like I said, like I feel like um, and in this Facebook group, like sometimes we ask questions, um, and <clears throat> you know there are there's a wide range of presentations of being a side right like there are some uh some men in this group who uh you know the the anus is a no-go zone right um you know there's there's nothing going on they they don't want anything done to them they're not uh they don't want to do anything with with their anus to people who say like myself who 
I am, um, I like, um, I'm not really all that much into penetration, um, like for myself. Um, I'm okay with say topping, um, but like, it doesn't really bring me like pleasure, right? I'm doing it more for the other person's sake. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, uh, and also, you know, and that's strictly through negotiation, right? Like, okay, this is what you want. Um, that's fine. I can do that. Right. Um, that's part of your erotic, uh, orientation. It's not part of mine, but like, I know that like, you know, I'm not going to be into everything that my partner's into and um, my partner's not going to be into everything that I may be into. Um, but just mm-hmm. as long as we, we can negotiate that, yeah. <clears throat> that's fine. Um, so, you know, as far as sides go, I feel like there's a wide range of presentations. Um, and I think that it takes a lot of pressure off of um, somebody having that to like say, gives them the power to say like, you know what, I'm neither of those things. Mm-hmm. You know, um, because when uh, when that when that question is asked, right, are you a top, bottom, or verse? You know, like there's only three answers. Um, so when you don't have an answer for that, a lot of feelings can come up. There can be some shame, right? Um, like uh, Gary, you were talking about, like even like there's a lot of bottom shaming in um, in our community. Um, and to be honest, there's some side shaming, right? Like if you don't engage in anal anal intercourse. Um, then some people question the legitimacy of your oh, weird sexuality. Uh, yes. And that's, that's a huge problem. Um, mm-hmm. Then there's some FOMO, right? Like, is there something wrong with me because I don't like this? Um, and the question is no, <laughs> there's nothing wrong because how many people like, is there something that other people like to do sexually that you don't like to do? Like on this podcast that, um, that uh, Gary's referring to, Somebody said, you know, do you like oral sex? Yes, I like oral sex. Okay, so like when you're swallowing at the end of it, and somebody's like, whoa, I don't <laughs> swallow. Oh, well, I'd love to swallow, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm. you know, that's what what I find erotic in bed. May, you may not, but that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with me. It's just per- personal preference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So me not being not wanting to get penetrated um, doesn't make me any more or any less of a um, of a queer person. Mm-hmm. Fact. Again, every, it, when you're sexually attracted to MSMs, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're gay. So we got your, your sexuality at some point. Then it's like, how do you manifest that sexuality? Um, but you know one thing, partner, male, primarily. Um, then, then it's like, okay, there's these threads that pull off. It's like that you go along another spectrum, the spectrum. Okay. How much are you into anal? Well, I do like to bottom. I do like to top. I do, I kind, I'm more like the top, but you know, the occasional bottoming, et cetera, or I'm mostly bottom, but you know, occasionally I like to top or yeah, I could go either way. And then it's like, or. Or there's the point of just no, not not at all. But you know, I do kind of like to be stimulated, which pulls off into another thread, thread. You know, a little rimming, or maybe you don't. You, no go zone. It and then you got another another point where it's like I I love giving oral, or oral, and, and then you you pull off another point. Okay, so you like giving oral, but but do do you for lack of a better term. Uh, to, to simplify things, do you spit or swallow? Um, it's like maybe it just doesn't even go into the mouth. It's like like I get you, and then when you come, I pull out, and about to come, I pull out, and then the, it you know it either goes over my face, goes over your belly, goes wherever it goes, um, and, and and just there's all these different factors that I think people are trying to simplify things when it comes to to sex, but it's not that simple. And, uh, but there are ways to kind of like give general ideas, like especially, especially like, like the top bottom verse thing that's on the, okay, if we're going to have in a linear intercourse, where are you along? But people have also used top and bottom on the oral side of things. So it's like, I like to be sucked versus I like sucking. 
Right, and, and but I would say in between. But I would say, Jeff, that most people would not equate top bottom verse with oral. I think they mostly like connotate it towards anal because um, I see more often than not people would list oral only. So they don't list mm -hmm. like TVB, yeah, yeah. they just put oral only, which then still needs to be clarified, though, if you're going to have, you know, an experience with another person, like, do you give, do you receive, do you both? Like, you know, like, where are you on that, like, yeah. uh, so mm -hmm. to speak? Um, Again, it's, yeah, the limitations sometimes can be difficult because sometimes you're not, you know, verse again has a a specific connotation and some sites and website and apps and stuff kind of connotate it like further where it's versatile top versatile bottom true versatile you've seen that but again it kind of all falls into the realm mostly of anal sex um <laughs> i get i have seen and i i I've, it's a rarity but i have seen what get, uh, jeff is talking about where there are like oral top oral bottom mm -hmm. um it's a rarity but it does happen um or sometimes the, then, the list they'll have the the like it's interested in instead of like position right. and then there's options top bottom top first top verse verse and then an option for oral only so you could have have top top first first that bottom verse mm -hmm. for the bottom right. and but you also yeah. have that tag of oral only which could then equate to in general side but then and you, the others have to imply do you do you give it is more of like how how you like to give or receive and the thing is if you drop that and just have the the, the top bottom first thing then everybody assumes just automatically assumes anal intercourse Right. So I have a question for you, Ed, that just occurred to me during our conversation. Do you think that side is a difficult thing for people because it requires, like, um, I don't know how I want to phrase this. This is, this is the shitty way to say it. It requires thought. So let me let, I, let me try to expound on this, I guess. Um, I think top bottom verse is very quick, like, uh, in terms of like a like when you're reviewing someone's information and you find that out about them, you pretty much know where you stand in that moment, like almost instantly because you're making grand like presumptions about what will happen if you were to be with this person. And because I don't know how else to say it, men tend to be very um, spontaneous um, like reactive instead of proactive um, about sex, at least this is my opinion. Like it takes more thought if an individual isn't something that allows you to make like a quick decision. Does that make, am I making sense? Um, I think so. Like, so am I um, like, am I hearing that you are meaning that um, like side is a difficult or could be difficult because um, it's just like kind of adding another choice. Well, not only does it add another choice. I mean, there's a couple of things that go on. One, it adds another choice. Two, it adds more questions because now you have to clarify, well, what define it, clarify it, communicate it. And all of that right there is what I'm talking about is like a time stealer. Like it's an energy sucker for some people. Like you have to put in effort to communicate to like make a decision to have like whatever mm -hmm. and if you're not looking to do that like to have a commitment to a person am i making sense like i think yeah. there's a, a part of the population that is just like i just need to nut <laughs> so <laughs> like you know well, and i think that i think that kind of goes back to our um to our discussion about um like the like self labels of like top bottom verse are very like anal sex oriented and that, like, I think that that means that we need to shift um, towards more inclusivity when it comes to other forms of sexuality, um, eroticism, um, because I feel that when we use those terms, top, bottom, and verse, there's also that added, like, code of, like, I want to know, um, I want to know more about your, like, kind of personality, um, you know, because... 
there are some like we were talking about expectations, right? Mm-hmm. Like when we say like top bot or reverse, we could also be meaning I want to know if you're bot if you're dominant or submissive. Right, and there's a lot of presumptions, I think, with those labels, Mm -hmm. especially Mm -hmm. on top and bottom, because as we've discussed as a group, not all tops are dominant, and not all bottoms are passive, and you can actually have the opposite. So, Uh and that's a whole other thing that needs to be communicated or discussed, hopefully, otherwise Mm -hmm. there will be some disappointment um, or frustration or whatever, because, you know... You go to date somebody yeah. and you're all hot to trot for them and then you find out that they're a passive, you know, top and like you're like, but I'm not an aggressive bottom. Um so you know <laughs> I mean But like but so, um I think also to um another kind of angle to your question is that there has been movement to include on say apps um the option of either not giving an answer of top bottom reverse and like inclusivity of sides because until sides becomes a um, like an acceptable term or an uh, um, an agreeable term, um, that is then like then there's always going to be that like well what do you mean right so yeah. if we can promote the term sides right as an option right and all it takes is um, so are you top or bottom I'm actually a side what does that mean it means I don't engage in anal intercourse oh done period this is feeling a lot like a, to kind of do kind of a I don't know simile metaphor I don't remember which which is which it, it's it's kind of like when gender started to get weird because it, people started realizing oh I'm really more gender nonconformist so now we get this like third gender quote unquote um, in and realizing that gender itself is on a scale um it it and people starting to use uh the uh using alternative pronouns such as using they and them instead of uh he and him or or she or her um and having having that come in and and because of how a lot of people in this world has have grown up in this society we are so into that dichotomy um, that it's difficult to fathom that. It's like when when I started being in, in the gay community, I'm like, okay, part of being gay is anal intercourse. You're either top or bottom, and then versatile is a, is a thing. But usually right. if you're versatile you're really more one or the other you're just kind of like open for the other maybe but you usually end up having your preferred position anyways but nowadays it's like all well topsy-turvy and thing and a lot of a lot of older old school people when these new things kind of come to light and are starting to be identified it's People are having it's blowing their minds. It's like I, I does not compute, does not compute. I've grown into these things. So the big thing here is educating yourself and practicing yourself. Like me, even trying to remember for for certain individuals that their pronouns are are right and and everything. It's it's getting into that mindset and adding that to your vocabulary um, and. Being like, oh yeah, yeah, oh you're a side, okay. Well, and so I think we'll we'll probably look baby. into this. What what do you like to do? Like, what are you into in your sidedness? Right, and I Sided. I think what you're bringing up, Jeff, is the the parallel concept is is that I think human society globally is going through this like age of broadening its understanding that uh-huh. we don't live in a binary world everything is not black and white we've known this for the longest time like there are shades of gray in between to use that like color analogy but what we're seeing is like while you're while we are birthing in this new age of, of concept of recognizing and meeting people where they are instead of defining who they are by our standard uh-huh. the challenge is being comfortable with that like to to understand oh not everybody is male or female. Not everybody is a man or a woman. Not everybody, you know, like not everyone is a mm-hmm. top or a bottom. Like, you know, you could choose a, a plethora of different concepts that exist on this like left, right 
um, mm-hmm. you know, kind of thing. And we've seen this within gender. You know, when I was learning about myself and coming to terms with my own sexuality, I was confused for a while because I've talked before, I, I believe, about that my father had collected um, adult print magazines, primarily Playboy, but he would get other magazines as part of like a trade, sell, barter, swap kind of thing. And so there would be like Hustler or Cherry or these other like off, um, you know, lesser known titles. And I remember specifically one of them had a whole layout of a hermaphrodite. And I was like, whoa, whoa huh? Like I had never in my life known this was a concept and found it fascinating because what appeared to be a woman was an individual who had a vagina and a penis, no testicles. And the penis looked functional. It was erect. Like this whole photo spread, like blew my like teenage (laughs) hormonal mind because I was like, whoa, 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 like, that was never explained never like still to this day is not really like part of i think like education about like what can happen physically to an individual you know as they're developing and but it was the beginning of an understanding like oh there are other options do you know what i mean like it's not just simply what we say it's going to be um and so i i take your point like you know the the concept is like we may have been told one thing, but then it's adjusted to it. Like I think of one of my coworkers who in the past, not quite a year for me at this new job, made a comment about the whole pronoun um, item and how some people put the pronouns in the bottom of their email. And they were like, what's with that? And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? What's with it? Like they're just putting their pronouns in to me. I'm like, what's with you? Like, why, why do you <laughs> care that they put the pronouns in their, in their email? Like, why is this an affront to you? That they're listing their pronouns because it it doesn't do anything to you. Do you know what I mean? But you're having a reaction to it. Mm-hmm. So I was really kind of intrigued that they were, you know, bothered or whatever. And they were like, I just don't understand why this is a thing. And part of me is like, you know, as someone who claims to be part of our community, the the broader mm-hmm. alphabet LGBTQ plus community, it's fascinating to me that you do not understand why claiming your identity and wanting to be recognized a certain way is confusing for you (laughs) so so that like uh that raises another point like you know for a lot of people who identify as sides they have uh like these reactions from um from the msm community right when they're in their various like sexual negotiations and you know like kind of like um you know all of us use some kind of uh like sexual geosocial networking application like grinder growler um, stuff like that. So like, it's not uncommon that three messages in, three messages in, we're getting, um, message. So you a top or you a bottom. Right. Um, and you know, uh, recently somebody in the group had said like, these are some of the various responses that I have gotten and they were kind of disheartening. Right. Um, mm-hmm. you know, being like, Oh, I'm aside. I don't engage in, um, in anal, in anal intercourse. And people are like, well, why? <laughs> You know, like, okay, bye. Um, wow. So, I mean, you know, they're... And, and I, I love the term because it means that, that it that the term side, mainly because it means, okay, that is off the table. And then I can go into more specifics from there. Being like, okay, what do you do you like? Do you like anything that involves the anal region? Or do you... Is that a no-go zone? Um you know, yeah. trying to be able to narrow down what that that also helps me put in expectations of what I should be expecting the matter. And I don't know why I'm going horse. Continue. <laughs> You've probably um, been talking well, all day. You know, so one of the things that comes up a lot in the group is the topic of frottage, um, meaning that like rubbing your genitals on um, on your other partner to uh, uh, for pleasure and you know potentially climax um and that being you know uh, like a lot of people have a lot of um energy a lot of vocality um to uh, promoting the the topic of fraudage as a as an option mm-hmm. yeah. again I, that's where the big question to come into is is not 
not asking about the specific positions, but asking more of what are you into, because that can provide a broad thing that they can then start narrowing down the possibilities and picking and choose. That that's where where it's instead of simplifying the menu where you only have a few options on it, you're you're broadening it broadening, so you have a nice yeah. big big menu of choices. Um, In sex therapy, we call that your sexual playbook, yeah. or your sexual yeah. repertoire, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to say this uh, uh, for a while. I like a sexual uh, playbook. I like but, the idea of that. I, I like to, to think in this whole thing that um, two places, uh, Morpheus in the Matrix and En Vogue are right. Free your mind. The and rest the will rest fall. Will <laughs> I mean, that's that specific second part was uh, specifically in book, but but yeah, it's and, and it's just being like open to these this plethora of because we do have when it comes to, yeah. to sexual interactions is is this plethora of options, which one of them is what position do you want to be in sexual in in anal intercourse? But maybe that's just one thing that's not off the table. But you got other options in, in the meantime. Uh, just because you have a pizza doesn't mean you have to have a Supreme. You can just have pepperoni if you want. Oh, we're back to the pizza model. Hmm. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Um, but like, but, you know, and I think I've mentioned this before <laughs> on, other, on other episodes, but it's good to be inclusive rather than exclusive. So I always say, like, when I'm talking to my clients about, um, you know, like communicating their uh, their erotic uh, like map with their partners, right? Tell them what you want um, as opposed to tell them what you don't want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, because it's good to kind of know where we're going rather than where not to go. Exactly. I, just in general, one of the worst things I, I, I've always hated in regards to responses to like, what are you into? If you say anything, I'm going to punch you in the face. Because that is what you said. You said anything. So here you go. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. Look, I mean, just because I, you said I, anything, I'm sure there's things that that you're you're not interested in, but you have a broad I, spectrum of ear. Let's kind of narrow this down. Agreed. What uh, what do you want me to focus on? Maybe that's but that's, that's where these jokes come about. Right. Yeah. Where it's yeah. Kind of like, you know, you know. What are you willing to do? I'm willing to do anything. Okay, great. Go paint my house, bitch. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, or you know what my thing is? I want you to eat sauerkraut out of my booty hole. Like, <laughs> you know, you said anything. Hope you like it. Um, yeah. You know. Like, hi. like one of my friend's favorite responses to that is, I'm going to fuck you in your eye hole. Like, I am, like, I am <laughs> going to eye fuck your skull. Like, that is what you you said anything. So here you go. Like, oh, you're not into that? Well, then you're not into everything or anything. So maybe we need to narrow it down. Just a smidge. I fucking off the table. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's see what else. You're not into that. Okay, right? first off, yeah. no, I fucking. And like something else to, to uh, that Roger is really important to, to talk about is the fact that like all of our bodies are wired differently. Um, so that like, you know, when we talk about so, okay, so so when we're talking about sides, right? Like, oh, okay, so I'm a side. Well, why are you a side, right? Um, there's a bazillion reasons why people are sides. Um, it doesn't, you know, and like we said before, it doesn't make you any less queer. It doesn't make you any less wrong. Like, you know, some, some people say that, you know, oh, well, you must have had some trauma or something bad must have happened. No, um, you know, I have a lot of people who I know who love their nipples played with because their bodies are wired that way. I am not one of them. Um, so, you know, uh, that you know. is, that's not part of my, ero my erotic roadmap. Um, yeah. And just like with the anus, right? Sure, there are a bunch of nerve endings down there. Um, and, but, you know, that may not get somebody like off, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and that's perfectly okay, right? If somebody was not into having their nipples played with, why would you want to play with somebody? Like, you know what I mean? Like when somebody, yeah, but, you know. If they, if, yeah, if you say you're not into your, if you don't want my nipple, why would you sit there and go, ha, 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 like here's your, like, 
like, what are you doing? Like, I, 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 it does nothing for me. So you're literally wasting your time. Like, yeah. I don't understand why you don't want to eat the club sandwich. I made you a club sandwich. <laughs> exactly. And you're like, but I don't like club sandwiches. sandwiches. Yeah. I... It's, and, and, you know, I've, I've met the opposite where the reason someone doesn't want their nipples played with or their ass played with is because it is ultra sensitive and it, it is to the point where it, it is not sexually arousing. It is potentially aggravating or painful in certain well, ways. Right. And that, and that could be a key issue for some people about anal like play of any kind, mm -hmm. you know, they may, they may be genetically more prone to hemorrhoids or yeah. you know, agitation mm -hmm. or other issues. Um, you know, perhaps they're an individual who is rather hirsute, you know, and they have mm -hmm. a lot of hair and are, you know, self-conscious about that mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. have found that, you know, they get ingrown hairs. I mean, they're, they're, there's a whole plethora of things that can be um, challenging that they're like, I'd rather not, not. Mm -hmm. or if I'm yeah. going to, it's very like, specific. I don't want to say, right. I was going to say specific, selective, like, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. and that's, that's kind of the way I feel about things is like, I know for me, I am primarily oral. That's, that, that's my thing. So, mm -hmm. um, like, so it took me years to like, you know, all right, I guess I'll, you know, I'll pick a roll, uh, you know, and <laughs> And put bottom but the reality is like the amount of times that that's been an option on the table and or happened is like very very like minute and you were far not, right it, it's just not a, a part of the you know the the landscape um you know and, and i have found more often than not it really is i think what i was saying earlier um at about the whole like time frame issue like i think if someone is just like looking to get off then this can be more of a, you know, I don't want to say diversion, but, you know, it's probably not going to be meeting their need in the immediacy. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if there's any possibility of an expanse of time of more than, say, seven to ten minutes, then I think communication and a conversation will be key because you can meet up with somebody. Like happened with me, yeah. I met with someone that I had been, you know, flirting with on an app and had been an admirer of for a couple of years. And I was very pleased to find out that they found me attractive and they wanted to get together. So we go to get together and then they reveal some things about themselves and they're like, I don't want to like kind of put a yield sign up, but here are things that like I want to do and here are things that I can't and or don't want to do. And I was like, cool. Like, you know, we have, we have this conversation. Like it it's one of the few times that someone was forthright to like kind of bring that up. And this was mm -hmm. years and years ago. And I've never forgotten because I was just kind of like, wow, like mm -hmm. how refreshing and like own, like responsible and owning, like in that moment to be like, you know, before, before things kind of get rolling, going, yeah. like, right. Before the, the, you know, the roller coaster leaves the station and we before. start this ride. Before like the gun should... goes off and starts the race, like, let's... <laughs> we, we, we should like, kind of talk a little bit about, like, you know, and you should know some things about me. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, yeah. fine by me. Yeah, you know, okay they were like, that. are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm okay with that. Like, are you okay with that, 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 that you know? Um, so I, I think that is one of the aspects that may, um, at least for people who are learning about this, to know, like, I think... If it, especially if a person doesn't know what side means, it elicits a conversation and an explanation, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. But if the individual is not willing, like, to have that, I would, I would hope that people don't take it personally. Do you know what I mean? And see it as like a rejection or a shutdown or whatever. You know, people are just like. Well, I, I mean, but, but I will say is like, so um, what I'm hearing you say is like, so when it's those like immediacy, like you know, when you are talking to somebody and like in two seconds they're like top bottom. Right. Um, and you're like, oh, you're only looking for kind of one thing. Let me just stop this right now and just say, I don't, I'm not into anal. Right. Um, you know, so like I'm, and I, I will often talk to this, talk to my clients about this of don't go to the, don't go to the hardware store for bread. Right. Like, you know, you're coming to the wrong store. You know, I'm probably not mm -hmm. the person you want to be talking to right now. <laughs> I mean, but what true. if I want to make an oven to make bread? <laughs> 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 I 
That's going to take some time. <laughs> and and it's, time it's like it actually works. It's like one of the things that that I've done is is even when I'm starting to get with with, with somebody, usually we we our focus is going to be one thing, and that I'm like, just let you know, my nipples aren't wired, which isn't necessarily uh, like excluding anything. It's just like setting the the expectation that hey, if you're going to try working on that, it's not going to do anything for me. And I don't know where. It, and it, and it doesn't mean that yeah. that if they if they enjoy doing it, I'm just saying I'm not going to get pleasure out of that. But it doesn't mean that I'm not going to let them do it. Yeah. it yeah. It's just it's it's like giving them parameters. Here's, um, to let so them here's know something interesting. Like, well, with um the the nipple example, right? That may not be like so. Jeff's um nipples name may not be wired, but say uh, mine are mine definitely 100 percent aren't. But say mm -hmm. mine are like. That doesn't mean that he can't play with my nipples. And exactly. also, um, personally, I love when people's nipper, nipples are wired. I love playing with nipples when the other persons are wired. I uh, love So it. much fun. It is so much, so fun. much fun. I love the pe getting I'm, the reactions a, out of it. I'm yes. But so to bring it back to the sides, mm -hmm. just because I would identify myself as a side, I may not really be into penetration, but like if uh say if you are into like anal play and you really like getting rimmed um uh, and you get pleasure out of that i'm there. all for it i'm i'm so there like <laughs> i'm so there let me like, let, let me give you that me, pleasure right let me give, <laughs> let me get in there i have absolutely a, a great question for people to 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 give to to their partners is asking them where do you like it so, or, or what are your erogenous zones? I, I, I don't know what the exact terminology, but trying to, to find out where are you sensitive that I can give you pleasure? And then, or you can say, hey, these are my sensitive spots. I like it when people do this. I like, I like, I like you. What, what do you like? What do you like? And kind of focusing on that, that means that you, when yeah. you're having that, that interaction, where each of you can kind of focus uh, doing it and trying to do that communication. I be very tentative and really bad about that, except for saying, saying, hey, just let you know my nipples aren't wired because a lot of people look at my nipples and are like, like, ah, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, it's not going to do anything for me, but you know, I just want to let you know they're not wired. Right. But you know, if you, you start sucking them, on them, it just means them. I'm not getting anything. It's usually fine. If you start nibbling on them, then it's just going to hurt. <laughs> And that's not going to do anything. <laughs> people, some therapy. people like the pain of it, but eh, not so much. You know, you're, you're, like you just like they're they're there. They're just they're there. Like you yeah. can do stuff to them, but like it's not going to do anything for me. I, I, I know. Mean, I appreciate. I appreciate the attention. If you like that, but I can understand. <laughs> I just want to know. Want to let you know it's not going to do anything for me. So if you're looking for reactions for me. Yeah. Focus on other things. Like, like you, yeah. Like if you have other things. Like, like you really like the you really like the reaction. Well, you can do that, but like you're not gonna get what you are expecting. You're not gonna get that like oh. You're not gonna get a dick hard. You're not gonna get like a a, a, a ooh wow ooh sensation. You're literally I'm you're I'm just gonna be like this like the whole time. Like oh that's nice. Like, that's great. Um, mm. fine. You know, <laughs> like you can keep doing it, but like. Mm. I mean, not me. Totally opposite. Right. Fuck them up. Like, <laughs> but, but in right. general, what, what, yeah. what's that pinching and twisting in the nipples? <gasps> me, it's like ah. Yeah. 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 So anyway, one of the things I think Ed that would be helpful is to talk about the subject of awareness. Um, in terms of, because that was the whole point of kind of having this show was to make people aware. Um, like, hey, there's there's this other uh, category, concept, um, self-ascriptive label, if you will, um, to make people, uh, you know, if you see this, now now you know more. Or if you decide to, if you if you kind of have a revelation and think, oh, I think that describes me, you know, to a certain point that you may choose to to use the the word side as well. Um, but you were talking earlier, so there is a Facebook group. 
that you're uh, a member of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's called Side Guys um, on Facebook. Uh, there's currently about 323 members, so uh, so there is traction. Um, and like Gary was saying, I mean, if you find yourself as somebody who um, doesn't really enjoy um, anal intercourse um, or even like anal sex of any kind, um, you know, this could be a word that you can use to help describe yourself. Um, and in your conversations with others. And for those who, um, you know, have never heard this, right? Like this is just a um, raising some awareness that not everybody um, may be into anal intercourse um, or anal sex. And that is perfectly fine. Um, there are, uh, there's a load of other... <laughs> There's loads of other things that you can um, that you can be be into, right? And we don't have to um, to reduce ourselves to a dichotomy of top and bottom. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of spectrums that deal with with here. So, right, and like you had said earlier about you know, I think this is a, a prime opportunity for people to consider if they want to be inclusive. Um, about a new idea or for them, if they're not aware of it before. Mm -hmm. uh, because for me, like, and I think, I think I know a number of people that are friends of mine that when they learn of this concept or if they are just learning of this concept, that this applies to them mm -hmm. and they're not, they weren't aware of that. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, that other podcast was interesting where they talked about the coming out process. And, like, coming out as a side is a whole thing because people don't necessarily know what it is, you know. And so you're educating them about that. And, um, you know, I know someone who has kind of said for the longest time that I've known them that, like, they're not really into anal. Like, they've done it and they've enjoyed it and they've, you know, been both, you know, the, the giver and the receiver. But it's not, like... It's not a thing for them. And I think they struggled with that, like yeah. within the context of our community, because like we've been discussing in this episode, you know, that there's this pressure or expectation, you know, basically the same thing, you know, that you say this, you know, it's kind of like saying, you know, you're a vegetarian and oh, suddenly everyone has all this like concept of what that means. And it's like, well, eh, it's not that simple. There's, there's more to the, to the situation to understand. Yeah, it's more nuanced. Life is hard. Life is hard. So, uh, I'm, I'm intrigued by this, Ed, because I don't know what your personal history is about the about being a side. Um, but if this is part of like your journey about acceptance, if you felt that there's been pushback, not necessarily backlash per se, but like negative reactions or confusion. So, um, okay, so here's self-disclosure time. Um, so here's kind of my journey of understanding my kind of place within the side community. Um, like I said, so like everybody's journey is gonna be different. Um, like everybody's um, identification within in the side community is going to be different. Um, and so I'm only speaking for me, mm -hmm. um, but for me, um, I, um, had a sexual trauma, um, my first ever, um, uh, anal experience, um, and, uh, historically since then, it has been very hard for me to engage in any anal intercourse, um, since then. Um, uh, like, as far as other forms of anal sex, um, I have been okay, right? Um, like, as far as, like, rimming, some, like, fingering, um, like, prostate simulation, that's all fine. But, like, the actual, uh, being, like, a bottom, like, receiving, um, receiving, no, I just, I can't, it just, it's, it's not cool for me. Um, but then, you know, as far as a top, I've just never, um, I have never found that to be like extremely pleasurable um, because I have, you know, it just, it's just not what gets me off. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so when I started grad school, um, you know, I go to, I go to a, a human sexuality um, grad school program, and I heard the time, the heard, heard the term of a side, um, and what that was, and, like, it was, like, the first time that I was, like, oh, 
I, there's a word to describe me. Um, and it felt really liberating. Um, and I was actually at a party and there was a discussion in a group. Um, and somebody said, oh, are you a top or a bottom? And somebody said, I'm a side. And that was the, that was the first time that I heard somebody else identify themselves as a side. Um, and that made me feel heard. It made me feel valid. Um, it made me feel seen, um, and supported. Uh, so then, you know, in my journey of, you know, human sexuality and sex therapy, um, lo and behold, I come across, I, I now know the person who coined the term. Um, and that also gives me a lot of validity and a lot of, um, uh, support. Um, and then he created this, uh, this, uh, support group, um, or this social group. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of my thing. And as far as pushback, um, you know, I mean, personally, um, sometimes I just default myself to the top label, um, because I know that like, it's just not going to go there. Um, you mm -hmm. know, like they'll say, are you a top or a bottom? Um, and I will say, uh, well, you know, I guess I'm a top, um, but I don't, I don't engage in anal, you know, intercourse, um, in any kind yeah. of, uh, sexual, um, escapades that I may have with somebody that I'm not in a romantic relationship with, because that's not a, like, typically there has to be a conversation around that. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm more of the, like, this is what I am into, um, and anal is not going to be part of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You gotta focus on things. But I, yeah. I believe you have a bunch of resources, too. I do. I have a lot of resources. And also, um, just to kind of, like, rewind a little bit, um, it would be very nice in those instances where I don't have to identify myself as a top, mm -hmm. right? Um, where I can just right. say, I'm a side, and somebody knows what I mean when I say right. that. Um, it would be really cool. Be so, so cool you know, how would like, people just say I'm not into it? that they're okay with you saying that you're not into it, but that's, you know, right. You know, I mean, the label I understand and respect, but like, if you can like in your sexual negotiation, if you indicate you are not into anal sex, then cool, like off the table. Like that's, that's where my mind goes. Like if you don't want to have sex, if you, I mean, you don't want to fuck, that's fine. There's all these other things we can do. So that's where my mind goes, but Again, you know, it's a lot easier I, I, to say I'm a side than I'm not into fucking. I'm a side, not into fucking. Longer sentence. Well, I want to like, I want to push back on that a little bit because yeah. in, I think the word fucking doesn't have mm. to indicate intercourse. Cause like, True. I've fucked some guys before and my penis was nowhere close I to mean, their Fact. <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. See, broadening your vocabulary. This is what so. This is wait, are about. we? What are are we talking about? Like, uh, armpits, uh, like, breasticles. <laughs> no, we're talking like we're talking a lot of body contact, like heavy makeout sessions, right? Like, um, mm -hmm. like what I was talking about before about fraudage, right? Like, I mean, I have definitely gotten off by rubbing my <laughs> rubbing my penis on somebody else's body that was nowhere near their anus so i'm gonna ask a question for <laughs> clarification then you would consider that fucking yep okay there you go time here's, to broaden here's... your 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 view of of quote unquote fucking well, but right, I think this is the thing is that everyone has different definitions potentially for what fucking is. And I think the base presumption is that fucking is insertion. Not to specifically where, but there is some location that something mm -hmm. is going. Um, like oral is referred to as face fucking on occasion. Yep. Right. Like where I could see like someone would say that a hand job is fucking but i could also see someone else going no that's not fucking like that's a hand job yeah. you know like like and i think there it lies the whole back to like having communication and a discussion 
Oh. I, we can go into a whole thing, but like I have seen some <laughs> videos where like the control that somebody has when they are um, like giving somebody a hand job and like the milking process and like the delayed eject like that's <laughs> that's I mean I think that can be that's that, that's, that's mind like, fucking that's a good fuck mind fucking <laughs> that is a fuck there's a lot of different types of fucking. Mm-hmm. Good to know. Jeff, I agree that, like, you know, like with skull fucking, right? Yeah. <laughs> Are we back to that I think again? <laughs> no. No. Maybe. This is, no. This is oral. All right. It, I'm just it, asking. It, it, I mean, there's also ears, but anyways. <laughs> so, Ed, um, I see that you've given us. <laughs> All right, David. Back to my um, original segue. Uh, <laughs> you've given us a series of articles. Um, are all of these from from Joe? So, um, so I have them, so I have six articles. Five of them are from, or five articles. Four of them are from Joe, um, Joe Court, um, mm-hmm. and then one is from Barry Burkholt, who is one of the contributors on that podcast that you were talking about from Smart Love, um, Smart uh, Smart Sex Smart Love podcast. Um, and then I have a couple videos from Barry Burkholz talking about um, his experience with identifying as a side. He's a um, a YouTube uh, uh, contributor um, who's a sex educator. And then uh, I also included a book from um, uh, Jack Morin, who is a um, uh, a writer, a PhD on, uh, I actually use his, uh, research on anal pleasure in my dissertation. Um, but this is all about erotic, um, orientation and erotic identity, um, as difference from sexual orientation and sexual identity. And then I included the podcast that Gary was referencing on, uh, on side guys. Um, and and yeah, so I also included the the a link to the the Facebook group. So if if anybody in here thinks that they may identify as a side, then join. Um, it's always a very lively group. Mm. Um, I'm I'm kind of excited actually to look these over um, because the I found the podcast intriguing. And, um, and then it, just to be clear, this is one episode of a podcast. Correct. Um, uh, the podcast is Smart Sex, Smart Love. This is specifically episode 50 where they talk, what called subtitled Side Guys. Just like, mm-hmm. right now, let's talk about sex sides. So, right. Yeah. Um, the, the podcast uh, had been the thing that had been referenced uh, to us. And so I was um, really intrigued. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'll listen to it or whatever. Um, and it, it was about 40 minutes, maybe. Um, and so, you know, I was uh, prepping food for, you know, Thanksgiving. And I was like, you know, this is something to occupy and listen to in the kitchen kind of a deal. Um, but I had not really heard before. And it's interesting because one of the things I want to start doing with my actual job that I'm hopefully in the next month and a half going to get more into <laughs> and have it not be COVID um, is I was like, oh, I want to listen to other podcasts, but I want to listen to podcasts about HIV and human sexuality and these things because what I'm realizing is I am the most um, – and this is going to be a horrible way to phrase it, so uh, just brace yourselves. I'm going to be the most most woke motherfucker at the health department. Because I am surrounded by a lot of old white people. And <laughs> it's true. And like what just came to me this past week, it was talking to me because they were trying to figure out what to do because they had someone who has, um, you know, is part of a, a couple and the couple is open and they realized they got their STI from another individual. And my coworkers trying to figure out what to do about that. Like, how do they, for the con- concept of contact tracing, like, how do they find this other individual if they don't really know them? Like, and what I kind of realized was, well, you should just probably find the app and get on it. Um, <laughs> but that would be awkward. And so I've been thinking about these things, like, you know, how I might have to create an alternate profile for my job on a couple of, prof- 
like apps that I'm on already because some people might want, you know, to reach out to an educator, to somebody who can like refer them to services and stuff, which is part of what my job is going to be. And this whole concept, I'm like, oh, this is another thing that will help me be able to talk to people because I won't be sitting there and be like, oh, what? You're a what? I, I, I've never heard of that. I don't, I don't know, what you're, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. I wouldn't say that, but I would probably, you know, try really. You'd be like, wait, to... back up. Can you explain this to me? <laughs> well, right. I would do that or I would just kind of maneuver the conversation and squirm around and try to avoid whatever the thing is I don't know because, you know, depending on what the circumstance is, because if I feel uncomfortable that I'm going to make it more uncomfortable by having them describe something, then I'm just going to ease on past that. And unless it's, you know, primary to the conversation, I guess, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, so I think the these resources will be really good for folks to, to check out in that case. So this brings us to interest. This is more for the three of us, Damon, Jeff, and I. Do you, how do you feel? Like, is this a thing that you kind of see applicable for yourself? I mean, it, I, and you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Yeah, I mean, you, I just, for, for me, I, I would not consider myself a side. But okay. if I'm talking to a cute guy and, you know, trying to get into uh, some something, uh, if they they no, note or, or or explain to me that they're uh, aside, it, and then I'm like, okay, cool, and then think about what can we do, uh, or you know, mm -hmm. what what is on the table versus what's off the table, and focusing mm -hmm. on 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 those type of things is that says, okay, cool, um, I like to be be rimmed. Are you good with with doing that? Would you like to be ribboned in return? You know, quid pro, a quid pro quo thing, and being right. able to find those boundaries of what are the erogenous zones to actually go for. It, what it does is it simplifies the conversation, mm -hmm. because uh, as as I was saying, sides are saying sides, or I'm a side is a lot easier than I'm not inter interested in natal. A lot less words, um, and right. just kind of like puts a point there, and then allows me to steer the conversation into what are things that do work, and instead of what don't. And saying you're aside, it means this is it. it kind of just focuses on what that person likes, um, and and immediately putting things off off the table. And I don't have to worry about that and, and I can focus in the right place and not have to be trying to work around something or having awkward conversations and, and everything. But I, I, I like it because it provides another scope. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just personally, I'm not a side. That's fair. Damon, Damon. thoughts? Um... I, I do know I don't believe I will be a side. While I, sounds, this is going to sound bad, but I could be side leaning, but I think I am, I also enjoy um, anal sex in, you know, in a consensual sexual, you know, with another person. Look, you both are wearing, um, have, two people here are wearing consent is by foreplay shirts. I think we get the idea that consent is your foreplay. <laughs> I'm just saying it's always good to have that part of the read card of the conversation. Right. Having said that, um, I this co the concept and the wordage I understand and respect. It's something personally I think I would enjoy knowing about someone because like, for me, as I mentioned earlier, I don't always have to have anal sex. Our penetrative anal sex. I don't have to, you know, do that. Um, and it does open a, a, another avenue as it were mm -hmm. of, of play. Um, I've, I've met people like Gary, you mentioned, like I, as I think about things and think about people who I've been with and, and, and played with and for one reason or another, they would probably identify more as a side, um, <laughs> Than, than a top or bottom or verse. Like, and 
I would hope that they would, if they can hear this conversation or hear this, you know, podcast, if they can learn that they're not alone and um, that there are others out there that do not um, necessarily need to do penetrative anal sex in order to enjoy sexual pleasure and play. I like increasing my vocabulary. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it's an interesting concept. And I am happy to, like Jeff mentioned, to talk with someone and find out what we can do together where those other things are not necessarily part of the equation. Mm-hmm. Not that the equation is won't com- get completed, it's just a different equation, right? Mm-hmm. To put in a math joke concept. Well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think for myself, uh, this was really like eye opening. And I think, um, and I have to like kind of work through this for myself. I think I'm more side than I am bottom just because of how I am. Like it's not, it is not, it is not first on the list. It is not primary. It is not how I see myself. Mm -hmm. Um, See, this is where spectrum comes in. Right. But if, but the, the part where I'm like, you know, if I was to, I guess, try to use the definition that does not like quote unquote does not engage in anal intercourse or penetration i'm like well that's not a hundred percent like (laughs) you know it's you know if it if if and where and when like i've normally listed in my profiles like if and when it comes to this here's what you want to know do you know what i mean like i've always kind of prefaced it that way you know like and it's usually towards the bottom no pun intended (laughs) um of the profile like there's a, there's a, a whole bunch of other stuff that is a description and then it's kind of like, and my feeling is, well, if you took the time to read this far, here's the answer maybe you're looking for. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, a foregone conclusion or whatever, just because I'm going to be with another person that that's what's expected to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm very intrigued and interested to kind of like learn and know more and to try to have conversations with my friends about this because I think I know uh, for lack of a better way to say it I think I know a handful of individuals that classify themselves as bottoms that may or may not like see themselves more in this light and that they didn't know that this was an option I guess, or in a, like right. a possibility. I don't know how to, you know. We're gonna um, have, now we're going to have side tops, side bottom, side versatiles. I don't think that's quite side the versatile concept, tops, but... <laughs> side versatile bottoms. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't it's, think it's, it's all a big, sort of big, big I don't think spectrum, that's... complex spectrum, but the right. spherical Venn diagram sort of thing. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry. Thanks. Anyways, uh, all I can say is this. Um, yay. Uh, nice. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, with that being said, I think we're winding up here. Ed, was there anything else that you wanted to discuss or, or cover on this topic with us today? Um, I don't think so. I mean, if anybody has any questions, uh, comments, concerns, you know, they can always feel free to reach out to me. Um, also, you can uh, feel free to reach out to Joe Court. Um, he is um, he is readily accessible on various social medias, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Um, his uh, He has a, a website. Um, so, I mean, if you do have questions, um, you know, there are answers out there. Um, just please ask them. Yeah, like the, the mm-hmm. Facebook group. So if you think you're... Uh, Aside or side adjacent it might be a good place and, and there are probably even more people there that can answer your questions that help you determine i feel like i am am i here's some questions i have it and, um, like and also uh with us with the facebook group it's international so there are people there from literally all over the place 
Um, mm. You know, like there are people who are joining from uh, from the UK, from, from other parts of Europe, other parts of the globe. So I really like that part of the group as well. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. It kind of reminds me of the uh, prep group that I'm on on Facebook because it's global. So lots of people uh, learning about prep and asking questions and stuff like that. So cool. See, mm. Facebook has a lot of utility in, instead of just uh, bringing up hot guys. Anyways. Anyways. Hey, guess what, folks? That's the end. Oh. Oh. Well, anyways, contact us, pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email, comesoutloud at gmail.com. Uh, you can also leave us voicemail at 361 we'll talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on various social media outlets at Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and of course on YouTube, where we stream these on Sundays. Um, uh, at comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our Telegram chat group at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col if you would like to uh, monitor when we plan on doing these shows. You can uh, subscribe to a Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Um, you can get various merchandise such as a comes out loud hat, consent is my four place shirts, which We've got two different designs. I mean, they're pretty much the same thing, except they got like different logos and different colors. About, about it. Uh, and and more than those two, that's the the pup and bear ones. Um, we uh, and also like this V three uh, logo shirt. And actually, underneath this, I have a version one of the Cubs Out Loud logo shirt. You get both of these all at Zazzle at zazzle.com dot co dot uk dot you, you know the various nationalities um slash comes out loud uh if you want to you can subscribe to us and become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud where you get a feed and uh links to the full vod of uh the our stream um uh, over at patreon or patreon.com slash comes out loud also, if you just want to send us cash, I would like to get a full-fledged green screen. Then I can make fancy stuff behind me. It'd be kind of cool. Um, that's just one of my one of my little little goals as we we build up in cash you can, and get some rewards yourself at Patreon.com/slash Cubs Out Loud, um, or just send us some cash at PayPal.me/slash Cubs Out Loud. Um, you can also uh, find us on Apple Podcasts where you can read us there. You can subscribe to us on Google, Google Play, uh, Spotify, and over on Amazon and Audible. We're over there too. Uh, and probably in any of your favorite podcast podcatchers. Uh, you can find me anywhere in the internet. Box at Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box Sub Zero, other. And over on Twitch at Windgem, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M, where I've been doing some more streaming and i think i'm going to be doing a lot more and of course the vods are going to be here on our youtube channel damon um you can find me as theater cup 79 on most bear related sites um and on facebook or you can find me as cup uh, ooh, cup ooh, wrong pup underscore umbra on twitter the twitter is not safe for work <laughs> if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. Uh, Ed, if they would like to uh, discuss this topic more with you or just chat you up because you're such a fabulous person, how would they do so? Oh, thank you, Gary. Um, so you can find me on um, Facebook, um, Edward Angelini Cook. You could, um, I also have a business page, EAC Therapy LLC. Um, and on Instagram, you can catch me at unicub underscore sex brain wizard. Um, and on Twitter, um, I also have an NSF uh, page, uh, Jeep Daddy 3. And with that, uh, take it out, everybody. Good night. Ciao for now.